Hey, Peppin. Yo, 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 yo. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about um, hearts. Hearts? Like the band? No, that's heart. That's singular. Even though there are several hearts in the band. Oh. Wait, are they each hearts? I think so. I don't really know, but it's like, ooh, barracuda. That's a good point, Nate. And speaking of big fish, sometimes people get catfished specifically on dating apps. And that's what I want to talk about here today. Oh, okay. come on. That was a pretty good segue, Nate. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we need to talk about that segue. <laughs> that was a pretty decent that was segue. A, that was a great segue. That's why I love these because you, you come here and I'm always like, oh, they must have these pretty quiet. It's just like, oh, cuss my mom mustache. I'm about to drop this down. No research. For what it was, that was a good segue. Ooh, I can do this. Make it a big fish. Welcome back. So glad you guys could join us. I am here once again with my best friend, Nathan Peppin. How's it going, Peppin? Yo, yo, meter. How's it going? Not too bad. Thanks so much. But I asked you, how's it going, Peppin? Yo, yo, meter. How's it going? Is that the only way you know how to answer that? Um, yeah. Oh my god, he doesn't even know. I we guess. are we're, we're joined also. No, fuck you. You lost your chance. But no. We're joined also in studio by another of my best friends ever, Nick Stewart. How's it going today, Nick? Oh, it's going great. I'm glad I could make it in that top tier of Steve's top 10 best friends. Wait, 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 wait. But he's the, one of the best friends ever and this one of the best friends. Well, no, you are best my friend, best so. friend. Okay, but he's uh, one of my best friends ever. What he's trying to say is I'm number 2 and you're number 1, but he just doesn't no, want to be mean I'm and not, number us. I'm not trying to say anything. I am saying something very specific specific and that's that nathan is my best friend and nick is one of my best friends ever so are these two separate categories like which one's better nate i can't make it any more clear than that uh i'm better is what he's trying to say hey nate i'll let you tell people how you're doing today uh well i was doing pretty good now i'm awful well, i'm glad Sad. to hear that being my best friend is awful nate <laughs> speaking of awful how about those dating apps Ooh, actually, love them quite a No, not that terrible. You, use, you guys all use the dating apps, or have you used them? Uh, so we had a couple episodes where I talked about my dating experiences on them, and mm -hmm. they're rough. They're not very good. All right, let's start Let's start here. Which apps and or websites? I want to open this up to digital dating in general. Which apps and or websites have you used for dating purposes? And so, Minecraft doesn't count. Oh, RuneScape does count. Oh, actually, I got married in RuneScape. I do have yeah, a RuneScape wife from did, years dude. ago. I don't Ooh. know what happened to her. That was back in RuneScape 2. I guess they call it just RuneScape now? There's RuneScape Classic, RuneScape OG, and then... Oh, so RuneScape. it's Classic. That's what they call it. The one I played was RuneScape Classic. Okay. Anyway, so I did pick up a wife on, on RuneScape. But no, I've, I've pick used up a, a wife? Yeah, you know, you trade them a couple mithril armor. I don't remember what the whole armor So you class purchased was. another human being. Yes, I traded armor for another uh -huh. human being and her sack of leathers. And who says romance is dead? Was she hot? I don't know. She had like four pixels to her body. I don't know. <sighs> yeah, but tell me about them pixels. <laughs> I mean, she had hella, hella cow hides in there. I was, I was tanning all day after I married that girl. <laughs> Yeehaw. Okay, so dating apps. Nate, talk to me. So I've used a couple. Um, way back, I used to use OkCupid a lot, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty good. Is but, that one you pay for? Uh, well, they're all paid for now. I mean, there's always I like the free some new ads. Yeah. Well, so back then it used to be all right because there's the paid for thing, but the Thing you got for the basic subscription was actually you no, know, or the free stuff was pretty good. This is like back in like 2010, 11, something so like that. So this wasn't really an app. This was like a website. Yeah, more the website. I mean, it's kind of like mixed. What's an app? What's a website nowadays? But I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah. The one you can get on the app store and one you have to go to Safari. Uh, like web app. Okay, whatever. But <laughs> so th th that was one I used to use, and then I went to. Uh, Plenty of Fish as well, and that was all right. Uh, a lot of the people that were on OkCupid were on Plenty of Fish, and then later in life, I decided to use Tinder. You know, despite making fun of people for using Tinder, I'm like, okay, let's try this out. And Tinder was pretty decent. Uh, I mean, it, it has good interaction and not crazy ads. I went back to OkCupid, and it was the worst experience I've ever had. It's like every five seconds got messages about upgrading to uh, OK Cupid Platinum or something like that. And mm -hmm. it is, oh, someone liked you, you know, unlock this, you know, pay us $5 to see Local who liked you. in your area. It, it was just the most scammy app I've ever used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've never used any of those 
pay to play kind of dating games <laughs> i've only i've only done the apps i guess because i did the same thing i made fun of it's like oh tinder stupid just go meet girls at the bar and then i tried tinder out and i was like oh all right this is this is okay but for me it's always been tinder and bumble and then i experimented on this thing called thrinder <laughs> you guys ever heard of thrinder thrinder no. thrinder okay no uh so it's basically three-way tinder where you try to find threesomes mm-hmm. oh nobody uses it okay it's no. like you go into your settings like oh i would like two women you're like, I can't even find one woman on Tinder. How am I supposed to find two women at the same time on Thrinder? Yeah. There's like a total of like, I was in Austin at the time, and there's like a total of two users. Mm. Mm. And Austin's I'm in huge. Austin, yeah. It's mm. like, this is a crap. So whatever, screwed that one over. That, there goes my threesome dream from my, <laughs> my silly app. Did you say Bumble? Bumble, yes. Are you not familiar with the bum? So, so I've heard of the bum, but uh, I haven't experienced it in full like flesh. So I haven't th- experienced full flesh bum yet. No. Y- yeah, describe to me the experience of Bumble and how it's different. Uh, so I let. It's basically Tinder. They're pretty similar. The swiping scheme is different to the swipe left and swipe up. So stupid shit like that. But the thing that about Bumble I like is it gives the women the power of choice in a sense. Because if you guys match up, it says yeah you matched, but you can't message her until she messages you so after you match it's up to the woman she has a full day to decide if she wants to talk to you and i kind of like that because with tinder you can match with whoever but then nobody talks to each other on bumble if you get a match and the girl talks to you you're like okay cool i know the girl's interested because there's been plenty of times on tinder like, even though you match you know sometimes you're just tindering out of boredom and you don't actually ever communicate with the person mm-hmm. i don't know i'd kind of like that aspect that bumble makes the women yeah ask first I've never used Bumble before. I heard about it. Was your experience good with it in general? Yeah, it's it's kind of like a cleaner Tinder in mm-hmm. a sense. It seems like people on Bumble are a little more serious about relationships, whereas Tinder, you get kind of that mix. You're like, oh, here's some people that just want to have fun. This person just wants to go walk her dog with you. Like, Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, Tinder, the whole thing is like uh, pickup lines and you know, guys just like messaging girls to you know have sex, essentially. Yeah, Tinder is way easier to find people, though, I've noticed. Yeah, well, but, a lot of people use it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people use Bumble, too, but it's... Like I said, like Bumble is taken a little more seriously. Where Tinder is kind of like a throwaway. Like, oh, let's go have fun this weekend. Mm. Uh, Steve, have you had experience with either one of those? Uh, yeah, I downloaded uh, Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, Plenty of Fish, and OkCupid. Downloaded no, no all five. No, I didn't hear about Thrinder until very recently. You should, you should try Thinder. There's probably two people in New Hampshire, and they're in this room. <laughs> So, are you suggesting we all download Thunder, <laughs> get on it, and match each other? Each other? <laughs> that's what he's suggesting. <laughs> well, I do have a three thousand dollar bed that we can uh, utilize. Ooh, ooh, it's getting better. <laughs> it's got massage, that's USB why they ports. Call it <laughs> USB ports. <laughs> oh, I can plug that's... in my e-cigarette. <laughs> well, okay. That's a plus on your bed. Like, oh, my bed's got a mattress and USB outlets. I'm not joking. What else do you need? I guess. And it vibrates. Like, Does it have a built-in... Uh, it's got a payment plan. <laughs> <laughs> payment plan. <laughs> what luck have you had with uh, either of those apps? Oh, they're all really bad. So are they bad, or is it just you're having bad luck? I'm really bad. Oh, okay, okay. But I gave it like a day, and then I was frustrated, so... Sounds about right. I'm very, very impatient. D- did you get any messages or any uh, matches? Um, I, Like... A- a couple um it was a lot of bots like there were a lot of bots like a lot of bots guys they've changed they've actually gotten really good at getting rid of the bots. no dude this was like less than a month ago okay well you- there's a lot of bots man like so many bots i so, guess the bots don't like me then i don't match with bots I, it's so weird you say that because i've never matched with a bot on tinder but so many bots. i used to like a year ago i used to be like every other girl was a bot i was like oh smoke show oh bot oh smoke show oh bots and then you never trusted the the hot ones anymore so then you just go after the ugly ones uh, oh, okay that's true i've seen like the the like the catfishes one like like it's obviously like a model like picture yeah, from like come to my Google. website at www.russia.totallylegal.com mm. well that's legit yeah. I mean, it does have totallylegal.com in the yeah, title. Yeah, you, you can't put that. There's also, like, a lot of prostitutes on there because, like, I saw a couple when I was, like, flipping through, and it's like, uh, you know, I just lost my job. I need rent money. Uh, I'll do anything for it. Just, uh, you know, hit me up, and we can arrange something. Okay. See, those yeah, people, that's great. You hire them, but you don't hire them for sex. They think they're coming over for sex, but then they show up, and you make them, like, mow the lawn, dig a trench for your <laughs> water lines. Like, they're saying they'll do anything for work. Mm-hmm. If they're going to suck a dick and lay, if, you know, why not go outside and lay pipe in the yard instead of laying pipe in the bedroom on Nate's fancy USB machine? 
<laughs> USB machine. <laughs> so that's the thing. Just if, bring them over, have them clean the house for you, do a little yard work, and then send them on their way. Man, you're living in 2030. Now, would they be disappointed in that? I, th- I think they would, but at the same time, if you're paying them well, hey, they should they care? They said they'll do anything. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. So I, many bots. See, again, I don't I haven't had that experience, but... They were all bots. Plenty of Fish is the only one that had, was like anybody was serious hmm. like i chatted with a couple of people but it was like the conversation was over after like two three messages but i'm not into hookup culture i'm not into like f- pick up lines and shit like that so maybe that's my problem is that i'm not playing the game right i'm, I'm the same way i'm not looking for hookups even though i did try that thunder thing out but that's because someone recommended it i'm the same way i'm, I'm more so i'm not really looking for just a one-night stand on there and honestly i think i feel like i take like tinder kind of as a joke like i've mm. I think it's way better to actually meet someone at a bar or out in public because I've always noticed those interactions or connections are way better. Like you have a much better chance of hanging out again versus like any dating app. It's just texting. Like you can't really, and it's always the same shit. So it's, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Just got back from work. Oh, what do you do for work? Oh, I shine basketballs. You know, it's like, that's all you talk about. Fucking lock them down. And then you never talk again because you're both boring. But if you actually meet in person, maybe you get to know the person. Like you meet at a bar, play darts, or, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, in my experience, if there's not a date set up within the first seven days, like, it's not going. Seven there won't be days. a date. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, because if you wait longer than that, they're just going to mess each other until you lose interest. If you set a date within seven days, then you're going to have a date. Then you lose interest after that. You're going to date in seven days. I mean, well, because the girls... Don't turn on the VHS tape. Oh, God. A lot of the girls on these sites, like, they're not... Like, they're socially awkward. Like, they want to date, but they're too, like, uh, afraid to, you know, out- go out and meet people. Mm-hmm. They just want to flirt people from behind the computer. Mm-hmm. Or they're just bored and trying to, like, fill the gaps of their time. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing. But uh, a lot of them, like, they want to go on these dates. But then when you actually try to get them to go on a date, they're like, ugh, that's scary. And they back away. Well, it is scary. Yeah. But it's it's really frustrating because there's a lot of people with, who you might be compatible with that you can't get date with because they're too chicken. But they're chicken because they're on Tinder. That's why they're there to begin with. Yeah. I've had a couple where like things seem to be going good, conversations great, and then we're like try to ask them out and like just conflict and schedule. That's what sucks, and then you mm-hmm. lose interest, like you said, Nate. Like I've I had this one girl I tried to set up two dates, and it's like oh one day I was working, one day she was working, and then it's like pfft, that was the end of that. Yeah, I, I've had a couple dates with some girls, and it, we get, we got the first date planned eventually, and then it's like after that we try to plan a second date, it just doesn't happen, and then it's like you always like plan something eventually, and then you know that she cancels on you. You know, something comes up, and it's like, okay, I'm not sure if you actually canceled, but you know, this is kind of shit. Like, I'm not gonna like spend another month like figuring the shit out. I wonder if, because I've gone on a couple of dates. I've only gone like on maybe five or six Bumble and Tinder dates over the last couple of years, but I do honestly do those things out of boredom, and I feel like a lot of people do that too. Like, I'll go on Instagram once I'm done with that, check my Twitter real quick. My Twitter's been twatted. I'm done. Tw- twatted? Yeah. Once you twat your Twitters, you're all good. You'd go on the next site, you know, check a little Reddit, and once. You- you know, just kind of go through your apps when you're bored, laying in bed by yourself, and it's like, oh, well, I guess I'll go on Tinder and see how many girls like me. Like, oh, cool, three people like me, and then you just, yeah, that's the end of it. Like, I've got like, I'm gonna feel cool here. I got 17 messages on Tinder, not messages, but notifications. Uh, yeah. it's just because out of boredom, I just match and I never talk to them. Man, it's so weird to have 17 bots message you. All right, yeah. Well, they're all the same bot. I want to talk to this one girl for like three days. Turns out she was a bot the whole time. Oh, you couldn't tell. I don't know. I got her number. Um, <laughs> was it a seven digit number? No, I mean, we were chatting. No, there. it was 12 digits. <laughs> I ran her through the Turing test. She passed. Turns out she was bot the whole time. Maybe you're into bots. Have you ever thought about that? Hmm. I hadn't. Now <laughs> I'm thinking about That's all I can think about. Now, the ethics of matching with people and not messaging them is kind of contentious. So I used to match with people all the time, and you know, if I thought I was a really good fit with them, I would like uh, message them. Mm-hmm. But usually I wouldn't. And from what I've heard, that's kind of like a dick thing to do. Is that something you agree with, Nick or Steve? Well, if you match and never say anything. Yeah. I mean, I I agree, and now I feel like a dick because I kind of do that. Because uh, sometimes you just match with somebody, and you're like, well, maybe I don't, I'm not as interested anymore. You just kind of leave them in, in the hybrid. I mean, I do message people, but say out of five people, I probably only message one. I wouldn't swipe to match with somebody I wasn't planning on messaging. Well, so sometimes you're drunk, I, Steve. I message like, with this girl's a, really pretty, and then you wake up in the morning and you're like, wait a second, that was a goat with a wig. Yeah, but what if they have a good personality? Uh, well, I, I would match with tons of girls and not uh, 
you know, message them. Jesus. I didn't know that was like the Tons. bad thing. Why, why even match with them then? Well, because it's just like, oh, hey, let's find all the cute girls like a date. Oh, she's cute. Okay. Oh, see, that's yeah, exactly, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. That's, so that's why would you message like, them? Oh, sweet, cute girls. Oh, she got a nice So spot. message them. I don't understand. What's Ooh, the point of swiping on them if you're not going to message them? That USB slots. Yeah. Well, no, uh, I need one of you to explain why you match with somebody and you don't message them. That doesn't make sense. Well, because they're cute. So message them. Sometimes you'll match them and then you look at their location. It's like they're 700 miles away. You're like, oh shit. And then that's why you never message them because you might have been in the same area at one point, but then you like disappear. But that's probably what? less common. Well, okay. Because it's a distance thing. You sent like a distance. But the bots always said it, so you're close. One. They're, every person on those apps is a bot. One reason. Uh, okay, this is your conspiracy theory here. Did you ever meet anybody? Yes. I have. All right. Well, tell me those stories because I'm I, done with these other bot stories. I had like six dates. Yeah, so, so, so tell me about your dates. One, I told... I want, I want the best and the worst. I want all six, because there's only six. Uh, one, I told on the podcast before. Okay. I don't know if Nick heard it, but I'll give it, like, the TLDR. Uh, I was... I matched up with somebody, and I did not look at their profile at all. I just kind of, like, matched with them, and they could send me a message. And they're like, hey, you want to go on a date? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then I saw what she looked like at the date, and I'm like, oh, is this what she actually was supposed to look like? Oh, and, is that the midget? Yep. And then I was really disappointed. That was a bot. But she, she's a bitch. That is amazing. Yeah. We'll listen to that episode too. I I, I kind of like regretted it because it, it's not like I'm like too critical on the looks, but she was definitely not up to standards. Like, I mean, she wasn't up to the four foot mark. Uh, she, she was not up to like a 4.5 out of 10. Oh, that's, that's the minimum for Pepin? Uh, 4.5 is where the pepin starts pepping. So if you have like a, if you're a five out of 10, okay. If, if you have really good personality and everything, that, that, that's okay. Like looks aren't everything, mm-hmm. but 4.5 and you're a bitch. Eh, I mean, if you're a bitch, it's, even if she's a smoke show, if you're a bitch, it's like, okay, we're going to do our tango and then I'm going to let you go. I like I, bitchy girls. Uh, I got no problem with that. If you are a 10, but a total ass, okay, okay I can live with that. Mm-hmm. But if you're like an eight and a total ass, okay, you're gonna have to get some personality. I, I need a little personality in there, but continue with your date stories here. Oh, well, there's another girl. Her name was Brooke, and uh, she we went on a date, and she was like a horse rancher person. Oh, horse girl. Yeah. Nice butts. They look great in pants, but you gotta be careful of the horse girls. Yeah, she, she, oh, she, she knew she was crazy, which is good, because she was a self aware horse girl. That's good, that's good. And self aware horse girl. She she understands that she has hay burners in the backyard. <laughs> I did not expect to hear self aware horse girl today. <laughs> and she, uh, so, so I guess her parents owned the ranch, and then her parents wanted to retire, so they gave the ranch to her. So she was like be training people and stuff. And we had a date somewhere in Sanford, and the date went you know well enough. Uh, she looked cute. We had some chemistry, but it was like one of those things where we, we couldn't plan on a second date, and she kept on like canceling, moving, and it's like I, it's always hard to know whether there's actually like a, if she's canceling because she doesn't want to go on a second date, or if she's canceling because there's legit things to come up. Because I understand from my perspective that a lot of times for myself, there's things that come up, and you you know try to plan to the best of your ability, but then things don't work out that way. And she, she was like a full-time business owner. She's working like six days a week, you know, at the farm. So I, I understood that. And that comes first. So go to the farm. Uh, that could have been a solution there. But uh, I just kind of got annoyed, you know, after trying to reschedule for three weeks. But I, I feel like she was actually pretty into me because she seemed really kind of like, like when she canceled the date, she really tried to like reschedule it. But eventually I ghosted her because, uh, yeah, I was, just, I was just like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's two. Oh, I'm supposed to tell six? Yep. Okay, so I'll throw the one but the bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, the midget bitch. The yeah, midget bitch, and there's that one. Midget bitch, horse girl. Self-identifying horse girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was, okay, I, I'm not going to tell all six because I can't remember all six, but okay, there's another one. She was, uh, she looked pretty hot in her pictures, so I'm like, okay, this is cool. Uh, and then uh, we are, like, talking back and forth, and she doesn't like people who, are like, are, like, a smooth talkers and stuff. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You're like, perfect. Yeah. I have no fucking game. What? I'm making fun of you. Keep going. Ah, damn it. Okay, so it, what's her name? Charlotte? No, sure. Megan. Uh, no, what, Charlotte. It is. Okay, Charlotte, and it's like uh, one day I'm at Marshalls, and I just got them back from like a training. I was working for like ten hours that day, 
and she calls while I'm at Marshall's. She's like, hey, you know, you want to, like, meet up tonight? Yeah, Marshall's? <laughs> the <laughs> shoes are on sale. Nothing quick. <laughs> Fucking convenient. I'm like, uh, uh, okay. She's like, yeah, meet me at my house. I'm drunk. I'm like, um, <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I meet her at her house, and she gets, like, takes, like, 30 minutes to get there, but she messages me. She openly says in the text, I'm drunk. Come over to my house. Let's go to Marshall's. No, I was at Marshall's when she <laughs> called me. Mm-hmm. And she, but she openly said, I'm drunk. Yeah, she's like, oh, I've been drinking. I'm just going to be over there. I had a shitty day. But, you know, we can have a date here and have some fun. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like she tells me to go to her house. I get to her house, and she's like, oh, I'm going to be a little bit late. Uh, I'm just at the bar. She worked at Margarita's, so oh, okay. she was like a bartender or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, she... It's like, hey, just go in the house, you know, fine. The, the door's open. And then a bunch of cameramen came out of the corner, and he's all of a sudden on NBC, Dateline Tonight, yeah. How to Catch a Predator. She, she was like 23. <laughs> she was just 23, like, Nick. It's just the way you're saying it, it sounds so quiet. Like, oh, come in. I'm, tra- I'm upstairs. There's a bowl of cookies on the table. Come on in. She, she told me I could pet her cat. I was like, okay, I'll pet the cat. I mean, I'm okay with that. That's... And then eventually she came home. The music was blasting in her car. And she comes in and we hug each other. And then she's like, yeah, I've been drinking. Sorry, sorry I'm late. And she was like wasted. And then, Sorry, I'm late? You went to her house. How is she late at her house, Pepin? <laughs> and then she, oh, she drove to her house? That why her car was bad, bumping music? Yeah. Yeah. She drove mm-hmm. home from work. Yeah. yeah. Margaritas, where she had been drinking. Oh. Follow the story, Nick. <laughs> I didn't know she worked at Margaritas. Damn. I'm she said that. <laughs> Damn. So... She gives me a tour of the house, yeah. and she has actually had a really nice house. And nice. what it was is her mom was worried that she'd be paying too much of a uh, rent bill, so her mom bought her a house. Okay. So uh, nice, sweet. And it's like, okay. So she shows me like the whole tour, and she's talking about how nice it is and everything. And I'm like, this is a pretty nice house. She's got like a bong on the table, and she's like getting more beers out. And she's like, oh my god, you look pretty nice. You're like, you're like, you're just like, you know, actually well groomed and everything. You're like a like a natural like man. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Continue. Well, then she started. We started talking about our experiences on Tinder because. What I found, what happens whenever you go on a date with someone who's dating online, it, the first thing you talk about is like, you know, experiences with dating people online and how it's been. Mm-hmm. And so she said she's been on a bunch of dates and they all end up, you know, the guy doesn't look nothing like his picture or if he does, he's like not very well groomed and shaved. And this very, mm-hmm. this looks very trashy. Like he didn't even like dress up for the date or anything. Mm-hmm. He just kind of like threw on his gym clothes. And then uh, she also told me that like every guy that tries to get with her was like, trying to have sex with her you know it, like it turns out like it's just like hey yeah blah 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 and have a nice back and forth and it's like so suck my dick mm-hmm. and she's like what what excuse me suck my dick i mean i just had a whole conversation with you didn't i and that's how every kind of conversation turned out for her and yeah she, she was really wasted really drunk and it was kind of weird mm-hmm. and but we, we got along right and then it's like the, the you know the, the, the recyclable things was just overflowing with beers, you know, beer cans. Uh, that's, a, that's a danger sign right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me, so she had, took her recycling out for her. She, she had two roommates. Uh, oh, ev- never mind then. You're in the clear. They, they eventually came back. Uh, and it, and at that point, I was like, okay, it's my time to leave because this is going to get kind of awkward here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to my place. And she's like, no, no, you, you, you should stay. Uh, we, we can, like, uh, you know, hang out. And maybe you could, like, uh, uh, sleep over. And it's like, no. no. I got four USBs waiting for me in my bed, honey. <sighs> well, this, you you sh- either need six less drinks or I need six more for this <laughs> to be any type of okay. See, the problem is that she was drunk. So, yeah. so, and she's really hot. Uh, let's put it that way. She's really hot. Mm-hmm. But the problem was she's drunk. And I'm not going to have sex with a drunk girl because that's just like a... Uh, Literally red right. flag. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, you know, she talks so much about, like, not wanting to have sex with people mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, how everything's about hookups. But, like, all the signs I got from her was that she wanted to get delayed that night. Mm-hmm. You know, she had a shitty night. She, you know, she was having work issues. She was completely drunk, and she just wanted something to like kind of. And, and I think that's why she called me over mm-hmm. was for a hookup. But I'm not gonna. And she also really tried. Was trying to get me to drink, because mm-hmm. if I drank, then it's not like rape. It's just like two pe- drunk people making love. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was like, uh, no, nah, I'm gonna peace. This is this is. Mm-hmm. We tried to reschedule a couple times, and it just didn't work. And 
It's like, okay. Ghosted her. Oh, the pep and ghost. Mm-hmm. I, it's a staple. Well, it's like if you, like, ignore me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. If you, like, re- re- can't, if you cancel on me, like, six times, it's kind of like. Well, I mean, you're not ghosting at that point. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of like, you know, I'm not going to keep trying to reschedule. I mean, I could say, like, okay, I think don't think it's going to work out, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, why be that formal when a relationship that's not really there? Is my, is my thought. I mean, it's the, the the dating apps are very informal. I feel like that's why a lot of people like match up and never message because you never see them. There's no real connection in the beginning. It's like, oh, you look cute, and I kind of like your bio, so you don't really feel bad if you never talk to them again. I don't know. It's weird. How many bios, by the way, are I like The Office, and that's their oh entire my god, that's every single girl is I quote too much The Office. Yeah, I want to go to the beach or the mountains. Yeah, travel and the office. Those yeah. are the two number one things. I love I the just beach want to and have the mountains. My partner. Yeah, bitch. I wish I had someone who had a million dollars would fly me around everywhere too. Exactly. It's travel and the office. Like, yeah, those I'll travel. Are, are you paying for it? Those are the most basic bitch things at possible. And dude, it's on every single one. Hold on. Every one. It's probably like I'm a, I'm no a, joke. It's probably sixty to seventy percent. I'm gonna pull up the Tinder right now. So all yeah. bios either mention a travel or b the office. Or oh, I love my dog. Probably thirty percent. I only both. matched with you because of your dog. That's on a lot of girls' profiles too. Uh, chances are, if I if I swipe left, it's for your dog. Yeah, and you should probably swipe left on our podcast because our podcast is great. It's amazing, and we're gonna have a part two of this because this conversation has gone on for too long. I mean, you guys aren't responding to me at all because you're not actually in the room. This is a post recording, but you know, we can pretend like it's not a post recording because the idea is what I do. But I we need to talk. Hey everyone, it's Matt Sicoria from the Behavioral Observations Podcast. We provide stimulating talk for today's behavior analyst. But if you're not a behavior analyst, you don't even know what a behavior analyst is. Well, that's okay too, because we have lots of interesting things going on here at the podcast. We talk about all sorts of things related to behavioral sciences. So if you want to check it out and learn more about what this show is all about, you can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and PodcastNH.com. Thanks for checking it out.